in the humble hills of the avium savannah. You ain't a man until you settled up your first capybara. Howdy there, partner. My name's Woody Wild, and this is the Wild West. I've lived at the Locust Oasis my whole life, but now that our borders have opened, it's time for me to leave home and see the big white world. For the first time, Balamorians with a passport can enter Mistelin's borders, as well as a place called Port Serim that can take me over to Greater Corum by ship. Plus, I've heard of a land called the Wilds that nobody rules over, and that sounds just like home to me. I wonder if they have capybaras there too? I'm sure no harm will come in finding out. Well, hello there, people. It, as always, has been a few days since I last recorded. I was busy editing, and there was a lot to edit for the last one, but I'm gonna try and make this one a bit of a shorter episode. I'm not sure what the overall goal is, but we have some stats to catch up on. Well, mainly two stats. Those are strength, which is all the way up to 69, the funny number. Didn't quite get it to 70, and I didn't start on attack or defense because I was just doing strength. But I'm going to AFK up this some more. I've been doing it at the Sulfur Naguta, and I've had three Sulfur Blades already in a thousand kills, so that is what I've been using to do it. I have this very nice pair right here, which I think is actually just my best in slot weapon. Like, this is better than... A D long with no offhand. I haven't actually done the DPS calc, but I'm fairly certain that is true given the stats. Like if we compare it to a dragon dagger, what does it look like? So yeah, the more melee strength, less stab, but more, much more slash. Same speed as a dragon dagger. So yeah, sulfur blades are good, and I've actually banked a shit ton of useful materials here. Look at all this iron ore. That's going to get me so many smithing levels. Look at that, 54. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get that done. We got regular gold ores. We got tons of silver. We've even got some tin and copper if we want to use it. I don't know why those aren't showing up. Maybe because they're too shit. It doesn't think we want to do them. Tons of ore built up there from the Sulfur Nagua. And a bunch of gems as well. We've got quite a lot of uh, emeralds built up now, so that's nice. Got some battle staffs. Haven't been too judicious on those though. And a bunch of runes too. These chaos runes are huge, so that's going to carry us through like the next 10 mage activities we want to do. And we got some even death runes as well. Very, very nice. So good all round from the Sulfur Nagua. The other thing I've been doing is Hunter. I'm all the way up to 46, which means I can now use the Hunter's Guild for the very first time. And the way I did that was entirely at the Moss Lizards in the Portsley Dungeon. So I've progressed Perilous Moons up to the point where I need to face the bosses. At this point I can use the rest of the dungeon regularly, which is why I've been making potions and killing the Sulfur Nagua there for my combat training. And the little Moss Lizards that you catch actually are the best option for me to train Hunter pretty much forever. Because the weird thing about these is, so if you look at it here, it says it's 90 XP, which is incorrect. It's 90 XP if you're max level. For everyone else, it's 90% of your current level. So it scales up. This actually gets better as it goes. At the minute, it's like 40 XP a catch for me. But if you compare that to, let's say, Snowy Knight, 44 XP per catch, like, these are harder to catch because I do potentially three of these at a time when you scare them out of the bush. There's no, like, timer that I'm waiting for something to spawn. I don't have to chase it around. I just set up the three rocks, push the button, set up any rocks that need setting up, push the button, keep going like that. And it scales up with me, so I know that I don't have to move to a new method. I can just stay there. So I literally grinded this entire thing out from, like, I don't know, I think I was on, like, 28 maybe. I was around, yeah, I was on 20, 28, maybe 29. I just grinded it all the way out to 46 last night in like six hours. Really wasn't that bad. So, I'm going to go and get a hunter's rumor because I can do that now. So, we need to go find out what we've got. Now, we could hit a bit of a brick wall here. So, I'm kind of hoping and praying that we just get offered something that we can do immediately. But we only have one hunter master available. If he gives us a task that is outside our region, I 
think we can only reset it once and then we have to do the next task which could also be outside our region so that could potentially block us until we're at the next category right now we have basic hunters rumors yeah adepts at 57 that'll give us two more potential hunter masters to flick tasks between so we might be able to make it more feasible then but first we have to talk to her can we talk about rumors a spined larupia uh, i'm pretty sure we can't do that i'm gonna have to get a list up on the side ah uh, that makes sense yeah spined larupia is felled up only okay oh the thing is i can't switch to another one and switch back so there's like no way for me to reset this so yeah i think we're just blocked from this which absolutely fucking sucks i was hoping to get a bunch of these done but until we unlock the next tier of them there's just like even then we could still be blocked but i'm a little stuck now my plan today was to do rumors until i had enough quetzal feed for uh, a landing pad i don't know if i want to do an 11 more levels on the moss lizards right now i just did a bunch of that last night well that's severely disappointing i'm gonna have to to come up with a new plan here of what to do today oh i also did get just like a couple of construction levels i wanted to push all my things above 30 because i had another tiers of gothics to claim and if uh, all your stats are above 30 you get bonus xp from tiers of gothics so i just wanted to push construction i think at the time hunter was below 30 as well right i know what i'm gonna do immediately at least i don't know what i'm gonna do for the full day but i got a hard clue that the first step was doable so we're gonna go do it this came from the nagua by the way i got it really early and it was a step i could do I I just didn't want to do it off cam. Oh, I didn't bring a fucking dueling ring. I'm dumb. Oh, is that my monk top? <laughs> uh, Lumbridge Castle. It's actually doable. If I go to level 20 wilderness, I'm pretty sure I can home telly, right? Oh! <laughs> Look at that knowledge coming in. Yeah, I found out the other day when I was doing orbs, because I forgot to bring a dueling ring on one of the trips after it broke. I couldn't minigame teleport to last man standing, but I could help home teleport to Lumbridge and then re minigame teleport from there to last man standing. So I ended up doing that. Another clue. Oh, that's not a doable step. That's in the desert. That is way over here. Out of reach for us, unfortunately. We shall have to drop that one. Okay, I think what I'm going to do in this video is go for the Varrock Medium Diary. Well, in this session at least. I mean, I don't know how far I'll get with it. I'm pretty sure we have all the requirements for all of these. Now, these are all out of region, these red quests, unfortunately. Except for a Soul's Burn. That one is in region. We can do that, no problem. But the others are going to take us out of region. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to break rules a few times here. The way I'm going to do things with Achievement Diaries, because they're going to require me to break my regions, I'm not going to allow myself to do any region breaking for a diary until I have the full requirements to do everything on that diary. Once I've got everything, like all the levels, I've got all the prereqs inside my regions that I can, there's nothing to do except those things basically, is when I will do them. And before then I won't allow myself to, because otherwise I could go, I could just say now, well, I'll go and unlock Ancients because I'll need it eventually for the Wilderness Hard or Elite or whichever one it is. I don't want to do that. I want to wait until I have all the requirements for that diary and then I can say, look, I'm ready to do this now. That's why I'm unlocking it. But it looks like we are ready to do this now. We have everything. So why don't I go do the steps that I can do? Uh, which actually isn't a great deal. <laughs> There's not much that we can do, but that's okay. Alright, I'm just going to kick things off a little farm run, because I need limpo roots for this task anyway, so I need to go get some. May as well plant some other seeds while I'm there. So yeah, there's a couple of reasons why I thought doing this diary in particular would be good. The most obvious one is we get a 7.5k experience lamp and i would quite like to shove that on herb law right now if i could get up to 45 that would be wonderful it would give me super attack benefit from moonlight potions in the near Portsley dungeon rather than simply regular attack potions however we can get it to 55 even better because then we'll get super strength too that's unlikely to happen though 
But an extra 7,500 XP is very nice indeed, and we'll be able to buy twice as many staffs each day from Zaf. Which as we do get into this Perilous Moons grind, will certainly be very nice, and I promise you it's not that far away. We are closing in on it. It's going to take some more AFK of the stats up. That's why I kind of wanted to get this herb lore up first, because the higher my herb lore is, the better my AFK melee training is, due to those differences between super attacks and super strengths and the regular counterparts. So 45 and 55 are quite big numbers here. To be honest, 66 would be a very nice one to have before we like actually start farming perilous moons because it'll give us a much bigger defense bonus inside which is very important there oh and it also gives us the ge teleport which may be our closest teleport to a fairy ring the one just outside the grand exchange and probably also just our quickest teleport to a bank in general yeah, getting my herb lore up a bit higher was why i wanted to do hunter's rumors because we got that Quetzal feed yet, but also it gets a decent amount of low level herbs in the Hunter's Rumors. So for now, that is actually the only task we can do. Slay a task from Vanaka requires us to finish our Greater Demons task. We'll do that at some point. The Tolna Dungeon, we need to do Soul's Bain, but that is in region. So I'm going to focus on this one next. You know, I might have all, my next, like, overall account goal, because it was to unlock Cam to Rum. Now we've done that. We need a new account goal. I think I might make that just to complete all these quests. Like, all the quests that are legal in my regions. Because there's really not that many to go after we've done this. Like, it's not bad at all, so... And it's all stuff we want to eventually do anyway, right? Except for, like, maybe these two. But Major Arena 2 would be a nice one to get done, and it's a more difficult goal. It, that won't be something that happens in this episode, I don't think. Me getting all the quests done, definitely not. But it's a goal for the future. Closest thing we get to a quest cape, I guess. So stupid. I always forget that I actually have attack and strength potions. Because I very rarely use melee at the moment. But I am... Wait, I don't know if this will reset, actually. I should probably do this room and then telly. This mace is ridiculously large. That's not a mace, that's a modding star. Oh, I think my guy got real angry. Something I found out on one hour limit locked is that sulfur blades are actually a secret hack in this room. Because it takes eight hits to kill all of the duds and they hit twice. So that's two. Four. Six. Eight. Now I don't have to worry about this one. Just makes it so much quicker to, rather than hitting it eight times and then moving on to the next one, it's just four hits, it's not that bad. Yeah, good XP as well. That's the actual real one. Okay, there's the quest done. Back in we go. Thank you very much. There's the task done. Right, I think what I'm gonna have to do is just go and crack all these quests out and then come and do the rest of the tasks. I suppose mahogany planks we could do. I'll do mahogany planks first. I should probably do the slayer task as well. Okay, I'll do those. Maybe I should do some winter, Todd. You can get herbs from that too. That might be a good way of making up for what I was hoping to get from Hunter's Rumors at this stage. Probably not a terrible time for me to do it in the account. There's 20 mahogany planks. Okay, I'm gonna go finish my great demons task in the wilderness i've got 40 left to kill and then i will come back to get this slayer task from vanaka which i will be able to cancel with points if it's no good if it's undoable but i do need to finish this great demons task first so i'm gonna go knock that out hopefully nothing bad happens i'll take nothing interesting but yeah see you on the other side of it and there's our last demon done wasn't expecting to come back to this task quite so soon necessarily, but I'm not upset with how that went. I managed to get them all down in just one trip there, so... No interruptions, I did come across a couple of people, but neither of them were sculled, so... Yeah, it was like a couple seconds standoff before one of us hopped, and then... That was it. And I managed to get two Lawrence keys, which is very nice, along with a whole bunch of Addy Alks. Tons of axes more than anything, but we got Rune Full as well, and some more runes back, so, you know, not a terrible trip out there. Gonna go see what these Lawrence keys have to offer. 
Apparently I'm on an LMS world. I did not realize that. I hoped when I was out there. So I may as well actually do the Vanaka task. Like on the way to do these keys, it makes sense. There's a fair likelihood we'll have to cancel this, but there's a chance that it's a doable one. We'll just have to see. Moss Giants is a doable task. I guess I'll keep that. I don't hate having a Slayer task outside the wilderness. It won't earn me points because it's within the first five and it's different from the Wilderness Slayer Master to other Slayer Masters. It's a different streak. So it won't be worth any points, but I don't ha hate having a Moss Giant Slayer task outside the Wilde. I'm fine with that. Three runes. Chaos runes. Off we go. Raw Sharks and Renar Seeds. To the Renar Seeds, I was low on seeds. Herb Seeds that I could plant and make potions out of. Well, I was out of them. Other than low level ones, so... It's the highest level seed that I can currently plant and make into a potion, I'll take it. Did cost two energy potions, though. Every time we run to Lauren's chest, it's basically two energy potions. Maybe I should get some more agility levels. Alright, so now I have done every single task, except for the ones that break my rolls. So, all of these tasks are actually doable in region. So I can do all these tasks on cam, for sure, but getting the requirements for them is just stuff that is going to break all sorts of, of regional locks. So I'm just going to go do this off cam. We've got Enlightened Journey to do, that has no prerequisite quests. Garden of Tranquility, which also needs a creature of Fenconstrain. And we've got Tree Gnome Village, which has no other requirements. So it is... These three red quests here, plus Creature of Fenconstrain. I'm going to go do all those off camera and then come back to finish off this diary. Two hours later. Okay, folks. Well, I finally got through all of the quests. Any items that were gained as quest rewards have been dropped, except for this Ring of Karos that I'm about to use right here. Let's have a yellow cart. Thank you very much. Yeah, just got to knock out these few tasks now. I don't think I'm ever going to need this again, but I'm not sure where I'd reclaim it if I did need it for another task randomly somewhere. So I am just going to bank it, but like, I don't think it really has any uses and I'll never use it unless it's required for one of my achievement diaries or a quest or something like that. Yeah, I did obviously gain some XP though that I couldn't stop myself. I think there was some attack XP. Uh, some farming, I guess we can look here. Uh, farming, a little bit of crafting, fire making and wood cutting. I don't know if magic was from a quest or if it was just because I've been doing magic. I think it's just because I've been doing magic today as well, because this is like the full day. Maybe a tiny bit of thieving as well on Creature of Fenkinshire. Nothing substantial anyway. I should make sure I'm using the Varrock plate body whenever I'm smelling bars, because Edgeville is where I'm doing it. And I don't think I ever really pay attention to that, but I'll make sure I get it in that tab. And there's the final task. Our very first medium diary, folks. And there's the Varrock armor that gives me that bonus to smelling bars and mining. And we have this lovely antique lamp, let's see. We're on 43. About 44, almost 45. I reckon I can get to 45 because I know I got some Renars earlier. Oh, I'm actually out of snape grass. There it is. So, 45. We can now make super attacks, which is amazing. Both for making super attacks and for getting the super attack boost from Moonlight Potions in the Moons of Peril dungeon. That'll make my AFK in a way better, just by virtue of having the level, even though I'm not bringing these in. And I believe we may also have the farming level to grow it now. I think we got a level from that quest, so... Yeah, we were only like... Oh, we, we needed 44. We're on 45 now, so... We can grow ourselves here at Leaves now, which does give us a better way to train our herb law, because I've knew it's so easily obtainable. I'm going to go check how many here it seeds i've got in a sec once i've made these lovely stuff and then we'll make sure these are tagged on the potions and we'll make sure that it's star tags so uh, any other super attacks also go in here very nice indeed so i've got 10 irrit seeds that is not bad at all i also got a harolander seed earlier 
Should probably just go plant these. I can also get into the farming guild now, but most of the relevant patches aren't available yet, so I don't know how relevant that is, being able to get in. Okay, well, I'm gonna take a break for a bit. I've been playing quite a lot today, even though I haven't actually recorded that much footage, because a lot of it's been off cam. But I need some food. I'm gonna try to dye my hair again. I tried last week, but it didn't work at all. Like, I got two boxes, so I'm gonna try again. That league's blue, hopefully. See you in a bit. Hello there, everybody. We are back a couple of hours later. The hair dye once again. Did absolutely nothing. Worst hair dye I've ever bought. I've had plenty of that brand before and it's been fine, but did not take. Hair dye aside, never guess what I'm about to do. I've decided I'm about to do some Winter Todd. Yep, just went and got a fire making level. Haven't really been up to much, just done a little bit of farming. I actually did a couple of farming contracts because, well, we can. So... I did. I probably won't get enough for uh, contribution from this. I mean, if I get all this fletched, then that's enough. But I don't think I will be able to fletch in time. Well, we might actually get this off. Let's go. I actually managed to get 500 points in that game. First ever crit. For a seeds, two of them. I'll take that. I'm kind of hoping for herbs and, and herb seeds are fine too. That's really the goal here. But any other cool drops we get along the way is nice. I've actually never got a, a tome drop on any account, like a fire tome or a water tome or an earth tome, not that I exist quite yet. So it would be really cool to see one of those. Oh, and I, I should formally apologise for wearing this fire tiara, but I needed a fourth warm clothing item. I got the colourful jumper and scarf and the lit bug lantern, but there was no other options available. That was literally it. I could have had a fire staff. But well, that would have sacrificed an invent slot for the rune axe, and I don't care about fashion skip that much. The fedora's here in in heart. That's 51 fire making. I mean, the level's coming thick and fast here from what I remember, so I'm not going to commentate everyone because who honestly cares about fire making levels? If I can get all this kindling in before that. 12% energy goes down to zero. I will get a double roll on the crit. You basically have to get every 500 points, otherwise you don't get double rolls. Like every 500 points is where you get an extra one. I can't remember if it's like a weighted chance to get it before that or not. So like having 990 would give me a higher chance to get to, but I, I can't remember if it works like that or not. I just know the 500 is where it passes. Please, come on, I'm so close. No, I was on 980. And we got fuck all. Well, you logs aren't terrible. I will be able to fletch them eventually, but it's kind of fuck all. And I did not buy enough wines to really do this very long. I only bought like one invent of wines. Uh, there's another one down. Irrit Seeds, Quam and Harlander. We take those. All herb related drops. No complaints. Yeah, so basically, if you got 750 points total, every crit has two rolls in it. You get two rolls from 500 points. But if you got 750, then you'd get a 50% chance of an extra roll. Because you're like halfway to the next roll, which is at 1,000. 1,000 would be three guaranteed. So basically, like, depending on how close, every five points over you go gives you an extra 1% chance to get an extra roll before you guarantee it at 500. So it is worth carrying on after 500 for chances at more at the next, like, roll. Full 500 margins are better. I think I'm going to do this to either 5 or 10 KC, probably 5, because I've barely got any lines left. I'll have to go restock. And then I might just do a solo one after that, because ultimately I am here for rewards, not for quick completions. And if I just get like one humongous crate, maybe that'll give me a bunch of the stuff. I feel like it's way quicker for getting rewards to solo it than it is doing the mass worlds. I mean, it's not great at fletching XP, but it is fletching XP. If I'm soloing it, I can fletch like every single invent. There's no reason not to. So that will get me more fletching XP, which I'm not going to be mad about. It's not a combat task. 1325. So that's... 3.5-ish rolls. 
Uh, now weeds and emerald and some burnt pages. Not amazing. That was fourth KC, but I'm pretty sure I have no more wine. I just want to get like one more KC on this world. Although I've probably missed the start now, haven't I? Because I've spent too long dicking around. And there is the fifth winter Todd kill. Nothing exciting there. Emeralds are never bad though. Howdy there, partners! This is your winner time guide! I'm already taking damage. I brought way too much food, but that's okay, because I don't know how much I'm actually gonna need anyway. Look at us already getting smacked in the fucking face. Can't jump across that gap. I do not have the level. Okay, maybe I didn't bring too much food. Maybe I brought not enough food. Okay, we can stand here in safety for now. Only three food left isn't making me feel great, I'm not gonna lie. But you do use an awful lot less food once that energy gets low. So this is basically just how you set it up. You light them all, you try and keep all four lit as long as you have the health to do so, and wait for it to get down to around about 20%. And at that point, you, you want to start to be letting the other three go out. And you can do this at any of the spots, I just prefer this one, because it's nice and close. It's just my spot. Okay, I'm just going to keep these front two lit. Not worry about the back two, because I only have this two lobsters. But while I'm already at like halfway, I may as well. Okay, we are quite a bit safer now. Kind of surprised none of these have gone out, but that's alright as long as they go out soon. Which they should, any minute. How are these not getting put out? Okay, there, there's one. I need the other two to go out before it gets too low though. This is sketchy as hell, man. Why are these two just staying lit forever? Okay, please, thank you. Fuck me, 2%. That was way too sketchy. I'm going to have to wait a bit before I uh, go near these to put the kindling in. You want to freeze it around 10%. That's the ideal spot. Hovering from somewhere between... 5 and 20% closer to 10. I'm just gonna yield the pyromancers because that will stop the energy and it is worth decent amounts of points. Rewards points that is. 30 points just for clicking the pyromancers. May as well while we're just waiting around. Alright, took a bit of a while to get set up there but we should be relatively good now as long as we don't die. Because we are out of food. Aiming for... 13,500 points, that is the cap. Any further than that and you're wasting your time. Can't lie, I'm a little worried about the HP toll. Gonna have to be very vigilant. I basically can't afford to get hit by any anything like that, because if I do, it's game over. <laughs> 31 construction there. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere near 13,500 before I get scared and end it. Eesh. I'm going to have to go hard for it. I had rapid heal on before, but it only lasts for two minutes. That's awful. We're going to have to wait till I get lower. That's a mental reminder to get any prayer bonus I can for the next one. But I don't think there's any... No, there's nothing I have in any of my free slots that can help on prayer. Okay. Now I'm actually in trouble. That just hit me for 14. So I could, like, die. I need to heal up to 15. Oh fuck. But it's going to be even more aggressive if I let this get up too high. It's getting dangerous. It's getting very dangerous. I'm going to have to end it like ASAP. Or right, I might not get this crit. I don't know how high it can actually hit me. I don't have enough prayer to be leaving this on for long. There we go. Thank fuck. I was worried we were going to get that. Okay. 2535. So we got six rolls I think. Not that great, but that wasn't the best run. That was very poor for a solo attempt. It did not last long. More food is apparently what I need. A lot more. I don't know how much we can fucking fit into an invent and still be able to do things. I'll give it another whack. My HP level's probably a bit too high to be doing this properly without bruise, to be honest. But hopefully we don't take as much in the opening salvo this time. Much more controlled descent this time. As long as the... Yeah, you know, I was hoping this one would go out first. When it does, I'll relight really this one. Unless it's already too low. Yeah, I'll we'll like that. Okay, it's like 8 or something. 
The lower this bar is, the less chance the winter tod seeps into my bones. Plus, each time you relight it, that's more contribution for free. Yeah, seven swordfish left. It's going to get me a, a good amount. I don't think it's going to be enough to cap out the crit, but who knows? I was way too slow on that. What the fuck? I didn't realise I didn't have energy either. Maybe that didn't help. My run got turned off at some point. But yeah, I don't think it'll be enough. I don't think these five swordfish will be enough to cap the crit out. Because Winter Todd is still attacking me. And when it hits, it hits for like a food pretty much each time. But I'll definitely get a lot more out of this crit than I will out of... Than I did out of the last one. I only got like 2,500 points last time, so already halfway there and looking good at the minute. Another construction level 32. Don't tell me this is going to be our secret construction training method. It's got to be like a winter Todd helper, right, that shows up the... No, I don't want to see that. Okay, couldn't find a plugin that I wanted. What I wanted was like, you know, if you do Zalcano and the falling rocks come, you get like a little red square, it highlights the tile that the rocks are about to fall on. Why is there not one of those for Winter Todd? I couldn't find one anywhere. Somebody made that. So I always find the white really hard to see because it just doesn't contrast well. Every now and then when you're doing a long Todd run you get these natural break points where it's a bit too low to really do another full invent. And you're running low on rejuve potions anyway. Especially if you've been spamming them at every opportunity. Because you don't just have to wait for them to go down. You can do it whenever they take any amount of damage. It takes like three amount of normal damage to take them down. So you can get way more out of rejuve potions than if you do it like intermittently. Whenever they take one hit of damage you do a tick of rejuve. You can effectively get like three uses of it in the same space that you do one. Because it always just heals them to full. Which means three times as many points. And when it's 30 points a piece, it's like one of the most profitable things you can do, points wise. Healing Pyromancers. So, yeah, it's definitely a, an underrated part of Todd, especially in soloing. It's like pretty necessary for soloing it to be healing the Pyromancers as much as you can. Oh, well, there goes the last swordfish. Okay, the health is getting a bit low. I think I'm just going to finish this one up. Oh, that wasn't a big enough hit. No, that makes me in danger. Oh, no. I don't like this one bit. I could die any minute. Please. Oh, my God, I'm out of energy as well. Please. There goes Pratt. Oh, my fucking hell. That was stressful. 7,850 points. Fuck me. Right, come on, please give me a bunch of herbs or herb seeds or nice uniques. That's pretty... Pretty disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. Alright folks, I've decided to do something a little bit risky. Somewhere I've been meaning to go for a while because this level has not moved for quite some time. And that is to the Wilderness Agility course and I thought fucking for a penny and for a pound. We've got like 600k at the minute. We could potentially make an awful lot of money if we just have a nice long trip here without bumping into anyone. I don't know how active a spot it's going to be. It's a while since I did it. The last time I did it was on one hour limit locked, which meant that I was basically never able to get into the final bracket of rewards. I didn't have time before I had to log out. So I was always in the 31 to 60 bracket at best. Oh my gosh, it's busy. Maybe it being busy means more chance that other people get targeted though. But there's literally people here in every world. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one because there's a lot of people here. There's no way I can get targeted out. I need to pay. Okay, I'm gonna put PK Skull Prevention on while I'm here. Oh, these bots are smart, aren't they? They're transferring off to other accounts. Transferring loot off to other accounts. I bet I can clean up here, right? Maybe they have like a controller who is prepared for that though, to take out PKs. That's the first agility level. I should have definitely got a fresh drink before starting this. 
Okay, we are now in the second tier of loot. I basically can't take a break until I've done 71 laps in a row. At that point, if I logged out or hopped, it would take 10 off my count, but that would still keep me in the maximum bracket. So yeah, I'm only uh, on lap 18 now. Need to get up to 71. And I'm already wanting a drink. There's no way that I can, like, AFK in the wilderness. I don't want to lose 10 laps already. Oh, we can't check. I will take that lamp. And there's level 54 coming in right alongside our first tier 3 loot, Haroon Chain Body. Got a very decent amount in the bag, honestly. I mean, it's it's a rough estimate and it goes off GE value, so it, it's using wrong values for f food. So I'd say it's maybe like half that much in alcohols and then the rest is supplies. But half that much in alcohols isn't bad at all, as long as we make it out with it. By the time we're done here, if we get to safety, we're, we're gonna be very rich. Ooh, a PK. I'm not really sure what to do here. I can't get a hawk because the skeleton. Where did he go? He started on a second person. I don't know if he got them or he just off or what. Well, bots just logged out, I think. This world is certainly an awful lot quieter than it was a second ago. Something like that. Please, 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 oh. Basically just fucked her. Oh, I got the hop! Fuck you. Little cunt. Can I get another hop at the top of here? Yeah. I don't care about that count, I'm leaving. I want to get out of that shit. Okay, we're not just out of the woods yet. <sighs> Fuck me. I was honestly thinking about calling it anyway. That's the problem, you never really get to the top bracket because by the time you get there, you get found. That is a lot of supplies and a fair amount of alcohols. All right, so if we just deposit all the food and restores, the bag says it's at about 500k. So that's not bad at all, because that is pretty much, you know, what we'd get for it alkin. Not mad about that. Oh, about as close as you could possibly get. Surely I got something in here that's worth pretty much 3k exactly. Fuck it, I think it's gonna have to be an amulet of power. And a ruby amulet. We have one mil, folks. The first time we have had one mil on the account. How incredible. What a momentous occasion. I'm gonna go spend some on battle staffs immediately, because I haven't bought mine today yet. And I will need to make some runs to the Earth Obelisk. I forgot that I changed that to left-click GE for easy banking. Uh, yeah, I'll need to run to the Earth Obelisk. I have Earth Orbs. I'll process these eventually. I'm not really worried about the cash stack at the minute. I'm going to call it there for a day on the filming. I've been up for quite a while at this point and recording for quite a while at this point. And I just want to go chill for a bit. Maybe do some AFK shit. So, yeah, I might go work some more on these combat stats because I do still want to get them up a bit higher. Maybe do some lizards to get the hunter level up closer towards this 57 being our new goal hunter wise so that we can actually try once we have access to the next tier that's two more masters and by flipping between them we'd be able to re-roll hopefully that's the hope is that just by unlocking that next tier we can re-roll the bad ones enough to make good ones hey everyone brand new day i've been playing for a, a few hours already i did some more combat trading yesterday and tonight and uh and today even and got my attack up to 60 so we can now wield dragon i can get that dds on lockdown and i also got the strength up just to 70 finished off that level there still need to work on the defense but i've got a bit of a plan for that uh, at least to to boost it forward I need to catch 84 more of these Embertail Jaboa to hit 53 Hunter. And at 53 Hunter, I unlock access to Chinchompers. So, because I still need to get to 57 to unlock 
the next tier of Hunter's Rumours to potentially not get locked out of Hunter's Rumours like we are now. I am going to do grey chins. Not going to grey chins, regular chins even. No coloured. Wait, no, it is grey, isn't it? It's grey, red, black. Yeah, grey chins. I'm going to do grey chins and get as many as it takes to get me up to level 57, which will probably be a few hundred at least. Uh, and then I'll be using those grey chins probably at temple spiders i can't think of a better place for them right now so unless i come up with one that's probably what i'm gonna end up on and to get in some extra ranged and defense xp that way the main thing is i really want to get the rumors online and the reason that i'm prioritizing it so heavily isn't just because i want a perilous moons quetzal which i do that's my first priority once i do get quetzal feed it's also because the Valamore Part 2 is coming out in three days, and I will be absolutely gobsmacked if there are no new Quetzal locations that need building in Part 2. So I just, I feel like I need to get on it so that I'm at least ready to start farming the Quetzal feed, even if I don't have a bunch of it ready to go, so that if there's any, like, super necessary travel points in the new expansion, I'll be able to get them online ASAP. And yeah, hopefully we'll also build up some herbs from the rumours, of course. We have to get there first, so yeah. One more level here, and then it's over to Chins. I'll see y'all when I have 57. Alright folks, the time has finally come to see if we can hopefully get a Hunter's Rumor now that we have access to the next tier, which comes with two Hunters. I managed to get 336 chins, so that'll be a nice tiny little bit of ranged and defense XP when I get around to using those. I'm kind of terrified, I'm not gonna lie, because the way that I understand how this works, if these are both bad, then we have to do a reset all, and if we reset all then we can't get a new one until we do the one that he gives us which is then locked to the one that it is so yeah it's tough what have you got black warlock i think i can do most butterflies i haven't looked at that one specifically i want to check what they both are though farming guild yeah we can get them outside oh thank fuck okay so that's a good one we've got that at service here thank you service yeah, the other one what is he offering at the moment Snowy Knight, isn't that also a butterfly? Yes it is, we can also get the- Oh, okay, so we've got two tasks here that we can do. Okay, that is fantastic. Snowy Knight or Black Warlock. Well, Black Warlock's higher XP, so I'll go with that one first. Okay, we're gonna go do our first task, this is exciting. I was bricking coming down here. Finally got a task we can do. There they are. Okay, I got a little info box enabled now that tells me the current task and like the estimated drop rate. But I, I think that's the maximum, actually, not the estimated. There's some weird mechanic with Hunter's Rumours where if you go like over triple the expected drop rate, then you get it guaranteed or something like that. So that you never just go dry dry on them if you do enough you will eventually guaranteed get it after that count. So, nice that that's in this plugin, and I can just see how many I have to go at the max, but hopefully get it before then. Maybe I should have brought some jars. I could have caught these and like used them as a strength boost, right? We don't have access to super strengths yet. <laughs> that could be a lucky, uh... Maybe I need to like actually look up what all the moss and butterflies do. See, the thing is, my mum asked why my right hand was so much stronger than my left hand. And I told her I was hunting butterflies. She just fucking laughed at me. Like, I hope you should believe me. Also, I swear I point this out at least once in every series. Why the fuck do you hold the butterfly net backwards? It's so frustrating to me. Come on, Jagex, fix your stupid game. Pretty sure the magic butterfly net is the right way, but this one's the wrong way. It just angers me. Ooh. I think I was like, yeah, 132, almost down to the end there. Our very first rumour is done. Let's go a swamp lizard. I don't think we can do those. Didn't even realise I'd clicked the button to go into another one, but 
No, unfortunately, Swamp Lizards are out of bounds for us. So, we're now in a position where we've got one that we do want and one that we don't. So what we're going to do is go pick up the one that we do want, the Snowy Knight. And once we've done this, we hand it in, but we don't get another rumour. We just hand it in and then immediately talk to this guy before anyone else. And he should offer us something new then. I think that's how it works. I'm going to open this first, obviously. Yay! No, no Quetzal feed. It's got some birds' nests though. It's good to know that we'll actually have a way of getting birds' nests, cause we don't really have a solid method on that front without bird houses. I could do a stocking on my jewelry a bit, couldn't I? Okay, I'm slowly colouring all the different butterflies so that I can catch, like, see which they are easily. Cause I feel like butterflies are one of the tasks I'm gonna end up doing, cause it seems like they're often doable. Wait a minute. I got a Fremenic task done when I caught my first snowy night. That is wild. I am nowhere near Fremenic. Catch a snowy night, it doesn't say in the Fremenic region. What the fuck? I can't believe I got that. Oh, accidentally completed tasks from regions I don't even have. Only Woody Wild. Ooh, 118 that time. Slight improvement. Okay, gotta be careful not to accidentally get another rumour straight away, because that could be bad. This is for Ornus. We're just gonna talk, and then I'm gonna step away and get a new one. Horned Grack. I don't think we can do those. <sighs> no, just Karamja. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, fingers crossed. A spotted Gebbit. Bollocks. Yes, but with a brand new... That seat. I feel like this is my only option at this point, but if I can't do this, it might lock me out forever, even from the higher tiers. But these are just dead, aren't they? Like, if I can't do them, then I'm just praying this gives me something I can do. I feel like this is not very progressible for this account without breaking rules, and I don't want to start breaking rules, but it's starting to feel like Hunter's rumours are just not possible. So I need to find out how this works. Why not give me something on Soul Wars Isle? I can't do that. Uh, well, folks, Jagex's system of allowing you to pick tasks has blocked me a Valamor account. I mean, I'm not just a Valamor account, but an account that was designed to take advantage of everything Valamor had to offer. Can't do one of the main current pieces of content in Valamor. I don't know what to say. I thought that it was different to this. But we're stuck forever. Unless they add some tropical wagtails to an area that I can do. Oh look, we got two Quetzal feed. That's super exciting. Now I know I'll probably never get any more of it. You need 10 for a single landing site. I think I'm gonna just spend the rest of the day doing some chill stuff off cam. A bit of farming and maybe some herb law. I did just get the level for watermelons, which means I can grow my own super compost now, which will both be good for the XP and for keeping my stacks of super compost high. I want to try and work towards getting Perilous Moon's completions because I keep sinking my money on battle staffs, which is a good investment for future me but bad for current cash stack, and I can't be asked to go and make more earth orbs. It's honestly a piss take when I know that I'll be able to get them in mass from Perilous Moons. So I do want to focus on getting my stats up a little bit higher to try and ease that transition, because fuck knows what gear I'm even going to be taking into Perilous Moons. Like, at the minute, I just don't really have any gear at all, so I'm going to need to come up with something with high defense. I don't even really have a good weapon to take. I can use this one against the uh, the Blood Moon, but other than that, I'm a bit stuck. So, yeah, I'm going to have a think about how I want to progress on that front and do chill skills for the day. If you enjoyed this episode of the Wild West, please do make sure to hit that like button. It helps out a ton, just promotes me into the world so more people can find the content that you are enjoying and we can grow this channel even further. And subscribe too if you haven't already so you don't miss any of the future content. I have a huge back catalogue by now and I'm only adding to it more as we go so stick around to see all of that by hitting the subscribe button. Look after yourselves, be lovely to each other and I'll see you on the next one.